The Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, praise God, this is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I'm glad you could join us for this Netcast. We're going to be getting into some good things from the Word of God, and I really, really appreciate you joining me after we uh, had three weeks in a row of uh, teaching from Pastor Keith Moore from Branson, Missouri. And if you missed those Netcasts, you go back and listen uh, in the archives to those netcasts. And by the way, you can do that very easily. Let me just give you a quick rundown on how to do that. If you go to our website, wofm.org, I'll put it up here on the lower third of the screen. If you go to wofm.org, Word of Faith Ministries, what it stands for, and you go to the top of the website, there's a bar there, a little uh, kind of a button bar, you might say. And on that bar, one of the things is watch our netcast. When you click that button, it takes you to a site that we have called speakfaith.tv. Okay? The .tv basically represents the fact that it's video, and it's called Speak Faith because that's what we ought to be doing. We ought to be speaking faith. Amen? So speakfaith.tv, and it will take you to a screen that will have uh, a slider that you can move up and down your screen, and select from the different netcast, and it gives you a little synopsis, a little information there on what the netcast was about. And you can actually then go back, kind of like going back in time, and listen to all of our netcasts. And it's a really neat feature uh, that allows you to watch the video on demand. VOD, video on demand. And so that way you can watch all of our netcasts and catch up with our shows. So it's a pretty neat feature of our website to be able to do that, and I encourage you to check that out. All right, a uh, couple of announcements. Uh, WOFR, Word of Faith Radio, WOFR.org, is having a tremendous new influx of ministers and ministries that are available on WOFR, so I encourage you to go to their website, WOFR. Org. I'll put that up here on the screen. And check out the schedule. There's a little button there you can hit for schedule. Check out the schedule and look at all the ministries and all the teaching that is available on WOFR.org. And, of course, they also have great Word of Faith-based music. Just a tremendous station that you can listen to anytime and really just about anywhere uh, that you have a smartphone, that you can tune it in through the TuneIn radio application for your smartphone, uh, and which all that information is on the WFR website as well, how you can do that, uh, through your Roku box, your uh, connected TV, uh, the Internet with the computer uh, connection by just hitting WFR.org and listening to the player that comes up there. By the way, a, a neat feature on that player is if you go down to the lower right hand corner there's a little button there you hit that button it will detach a copy of the player and put it up in the corner of your screen and that way if you continue to surf around the web check out other things on the web and so forth it'll keep playing Word of Faith Radio so neat little feature there that not too many people are aware of that they could be listening to Word of Faith Radio while they just keep surfing the web and do, doing whatever they're doing so neat stuff that I really encourage you to take advantage of. All right, let's get into the Word of God this week. We're going to go to 1 Peter chapter 1. I'm sorry, I'm wrong. Not 1 Peter chapter 1, that's good. <laughs> but 2 Peter <laughs> chapter 1. I was looking at the 1 for the chapter 1, and I said 1 Peter. It's amazing how your mind does that. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Okay. Simon Peter is servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through 
the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to come back to that because that's an important point. According as his divine power hath. Now what do we know about the word hath? Hath is a good old King James word that is kind of a King James expression for has uh, or has already. We might even put it that way. And it's past tense. Hath means it's past tense. If I hath been given, <laughs> then it's already been given to me, right? According as his divine power hath given unto us all things. Now how much did he give us? All things that pertain unto life and godliness. Now life that he's talking about here is our natural day-to-day -day life that we live every day, right? The life. And godliness is our spiritual life and our spiritual existence. Okay? So everything that pertains unto life here in the natural and godliness and spirituality, all things that pertain to that, well, I don't know about you, but that's all things. That's all that there is. But how did you do it? Through the knowledge of him that hath again, half already, called us to glory and to virtue. Now, I'm going to pull up my King James with Strong's Concordance here in my eSword that I have here on my screen, eSword.net, by the way. It's free. You can download it and have this same feature. And I want to look at something here. According as his divine... Now that word divine is theos, that's a familiar Greek word, meaning God-like or divinity. Through his God-like and divine power, which is dunamis, that's miraculous power, hath given unto us all things, now that's any, all, every, and the whole, that's all there is, all things, that pertain unto life, dose, literally life, where we get the word uh, zoe, that's derivative of that, and godliness, which is yosebia, or piety, or specifically the gospel scheme, or the spiritual world, essentially, through the, here it is, knowledge. This is what I wanted to get to. The word knowledge here is epignosis. Now, I've taught on this before about epignosis, this word. Epi is a Greek um, suffix that means above and beyond. Okay? And gnosis is a word that means mental understanding. So let's put it this way. It is above and beyond the natural mental understanding. Now, epignosis, then, means what? It means full discernment, or we'd say revelation knowledge. It is not regular knowledge, which is gnosis. It is epignosis, or above and beyond natural knowledge. Okay? That above and beyond natural knowledge is what he uses to move us into glory and virtue. So now let's just find out what these terms mean. Glory is doxa in the Greek. It means, uh, come, has a very wide application, means literally or figuratively apparent or glorious. Can be translated honor, praise, worship, dignity, glory. Okay? And then virtue, I love this word virtue, it is arete, and it means manliness, valor, and excellence. God has called, it, called us to manly, godly excellence. Wow. See, Brother Kenneth Copeland talks about excellence in ministry. He talks about having a desire to have high quality in ministry, high quality in your life, high quality in your lifestyle, not just because you want to excel in the natural, but because you want to be an example 
of the blessings of God, of the glory of God to others. You want to be manly, virtuously excellent. Okay? And that is praiseworthy. Those who operate in excellence, generally, are praised. For instance, a sports team. If they have a great season, they have a great year, and they, boy, they break records, and they just, they have the most valuable player, and they have all this stuff going on in their season, they are said to have an excellent season. See, there's the excellence. And they are praised as the best team in that particular sport, whatever it may be, basketball, football, whatever. So excellence creates praiseworthiness. Now, of course, we don't receive praise for ourselves. We receive praise for the Lord. The Lord is the one to be praised, not Dr. Bill. <laughs> no. But I need to operate in excellence of ministry so that God, so that what I do for him, let's put it that way, what I do for him is a reflection upon him and upon his message that is good. You see what I'm saying? So we're not doing it for our own purposes. We're doing it to glorify God. We're doing it to serve Him. Basically what we're saying is, whatever we do for the Lord, we want to do well. We want to do in excellence. And it is through the knowledge of God that we arrive at this particular position, situation, where we are operating in excellence. Now let's go back and read it with all that in mind. Verse 2, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine dunamis power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life, the natural life, the life that we live, and godliness, piety, uh, living in God, spiritual life, through what? Through the revelation knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to manly excellence. Now, this knowledge has to be vital, has to be important, if it is through this knowledge that this excellence can be attained. And revelation knowledge is what it is all about. You don't get revelation knowledge by just picking up your Bible and reading a dry reading of the Bible. Now let me say this, anytime you read the Bible, that's a good thing, don't get me wrong. But if all you do is, is every day you're going to pick up and read a chapter, while that is good, nothing wrong with that, that in and of itself is not enough to attain or receive revelation knowledge. Do you know how you get revelation knowledge, how it really works? It works because of biblical teaching. Hearing the Word of God taught. This that's going on right now. As I teach the Word, there's an anointing upon the teaching ministry that will reveal to you things from the Word of God. Now, you know, I bring out the Greek and I do all these different things, but it's not just the, it's not just the, dry aspects, and I don't mean to put it that way that it's dry because, you know, I like it, I enjoy it. <laughs> but it's not just the methods, that's really what I'm trying to say. It's not the methods of the teaching that brings things out, it's the Holy Spirit anointing the teaching that brings things out. You see what I'm saying? So, revelation comes because you dig into the Word of God. Now, the everyday Bible reading, again, I encourage that. I respect that. I think you should be doing that. But it's going to take some intense study, some hearing the Word of God on a regular basis, both by going to church, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, going to church, amen, and going to special meetings, hearing Brother Copeland, and playing your CDs and your mp3s of good solid teaching of the Word of God. Listen to Word of Faith Radio. All the different venues that you have to hear the Word of God on a regular basis, 
Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And you've heard me say this so many times. That word hearing is a koe in the Greek. A-K-O-E is the way it's transliterated. A koe, it means more than the mere sense of hearing. It means hearing and receiving teaching from the word of God. So faith cometh by hearing and receiving the teaching. You got to hear it and you got to receive it. Did you get that? Now if you're listening to a, uh, a audio version of this netcast, you may not be getting it. If you're listening to it on WOFR.org, you may not be getting it. What I did is I pointed to my ear, you got to hear it, and then I pointed to my heart, you got to receive it into your heart. That's the process. Hear it, receive it. More than the mere sense of hearing, you got to hear it, you got to get it in your spirit. That involves hearing it, that involves saying it, that involves doing it, that involves being involved with the Word of God. Not just giving it a cursory, eh, I go to church every other Sunday, you know, I occasionally read my Bible, you know, or I've got my little cards in the kitchen that I pull out of the little box. That's not going to cut it. That's my point. Nothing wrong with reading scriptures every day. Nothing wrong. You know what I'm saying? I'm not belittling that. I'm saying that's not enough. It's not enough. You got to do more. You say, Dr. Bill, you're always talking about you got to do more. <laughs> Isn't there an easy way to do this? Well, see, again, the attitude there is wrong. Getting into the Word of God is exciting. Receiving from the Word of God is a thrill. I go to a meeting and I hear the Word of God and Revelation knowledge comes, and you know what it's like when Revelation knowledge comes. You've been sitting in a meeting, you've been hearing somebody teach, and the light goes off. And you go, wow, I didn't see it that way before. I, wow, that experience of the light of Revelation knowledge, that Revelation knowledge is the through the knowledge of God that he's talking about here. That's why I wanted to read this to you and get this stirring in you. You need a quest for revelation knowledge. You need a desire for revelation knowledge. That ought to be your heart's cry is for revelation knowledge. Because revelation knowledge, listen to this again, grace and peace be multiplied to you through the revelation knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the revelation knowledge. Remember this word is epignosis, revelation knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Whereby, the next verse, verse 4, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Do you see that? Exceeding great That'd be one thing if they're just great promises. But they're exceeding great. And they're not only exceeding great, they're precious promises. That by these you might be partakers. Woo! Mm, 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 mm. Partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, which lust here, and I'll, I'll give you the Greek, the word lust here is epithumia, and it means a longing that is forbidden. That is an inordinate desire, a forbidden type of lust. The corruption that is in the world through inordinate lust, you can escape that, how? whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these exceeding great and precious promises through revelation knowledge of the Word of God, that by those you might be partakers of the divine nature. Now, if you're a partaker of God's divine nature, you are no longer a mere man. Okay? You are now operating in God's divine nature. Amen? Now, if you do that, let me go back and read it again, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises from the Word of God, 
through revelation knowledge, that by these great and precious promises you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through this inordinate desire. A lot of people say, Dr. Bill, how can I get past all these lusts and inordinate desires that I have for worldly things? How do you do it? Through revelation knowledge. Through hearing the Word of God on a consistent, regular basis. That's the only way you're going to do it. Revelation knowledge of the Word of God. Because when you do that, you become a partaker of the divine nature. Now you might say, well, Dr. Bill, I became a partaker of the divine nature when I got born again. Yes, you did. Absolutely. But did you know that getting born again does not mean that you never sin? Uh-oh. <laughs> it means you have been cleansed of sin, S-I-N, sin. But it is. it does not mean it is impossible for you to never sin again. Now, I talked to a pastor one time, many years ago, and he told me, Dr. Bill, actually at that time I didn't have my doctorate, <laughs> so it was just Brother Bill. He said, Brother Bill, I don't sin anymore. I said, is that so? <laughs> he said, absolutely, I don't sin anymore. I said, well, uh, good for you. I didn't believe it, but I said, good for you. Oh, what else was I going to say? And he said, no. See, here's the thing. I don't sin anymore because I've been cleansed from sin and all unrighteousness, and so it's just not possible for me to sin. Excuse me? You know, why is First John 1 in the Bible <laughs> where it says, when you sin, believer, because he's talking to believers there. Don't, don't think he's not. He's writing to believers. And he says, when you sin, confess your sins, and they'll be forgiven you, and you'll be cleansed from all unrighteousness. First John 1 9. You say, but Dr. Bill, I thought we were free from sin. We're free from sin and its power. But if we don't keep our body under, if we don't flee from inordinate lusts of this world, you have entirely the possibility that you can sin. It is not impossible for you to sin. Now, realize this. You sure don't want to sin. It's like Paul said. The things I would do, I don't do. The things I don't want to do, that's what I do. Oh, wretched man that I am. How am I going to get over this? <laughs> through the Spirit of God and through the power of God. That's how you do it, he went on to say. He was preached there, and he went on, talked about that. But he was setting up the, the teaching by saying, the things I want to do, I can't do. And the things I don't want to do, that's what I do. Have you ever felt that way? Well, as a believer, don't let that frustrate you that, oh, no, I must not be born again. No, you're born again if you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord. Believe God raised him from the dead, according to Romans 10, 9, and 10. If you've done that, you're born again. You are saved. But your mind has to be renewed. Your mind has to be renewed to revelation knowledge of the Word of God. And the only way for that to happen is to hear the Word and hear the Word and hear the Word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word and hearing by the Word and hearing by the Word. It's an ongoing process. I like to put it this way sometimes. Hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. It just goes on and on. It's a continual process. And yet, it's a continual process that's fun. It's fun to get into the Word of God. It's fun to go to meetings where they're preaching the Word. It's fun to worship the Lord and praise the Lord in church and in meetings. Praise God. That's great. I enjoy it. I enjoy listening to Word of Faith Radio. I enjoy listening to teaching. I enjoy listening to all these things that bring revelation knowledge. And the more I surround myself with the Word of God and the study of His Word and revelation knowledge, the less and the less and the less that the corruption that is in the world through lust can affect my life and lifestyle. Now let me say, tell you this. If you don't hear the word on a regular basis, 
and you don't get into the Word of God on a regular basis, and you're not hearing and hearing and hearing the Word, you will begin to drift down the stream with the rest of the world because the world's going in a negative, corrupt direction. That Babylonian system that's out there, you'll get right in the middle of it and you'll be in a mess. And you don't have to do anything special other than just quit. Quit listening to the Word. Quit surrounding yourself with the Word. Quit fellowshipping with fellow believers. Just quit. And if you do that, you'll drift away. See, that's the sad thing. There are a lot of Christians that I am absolutely convinced their intent was not to backslide. That was not their desire. That was not their intention. But as they got away from church, and they got away from the Word, and they got away from hearing the Word, they just drifted further and further away from the Lord and from things of the Spirit. And before too long, the corruption of the world had affected them. They had become conformed to the world system. Now, let's go over to Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I want you to see what it says here. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Now, you know, I've said this before. The word beseech is a powerful word in the original Greek. It means to beg. I beg you, brethren. He's not being flippant about this. He says, brethren, I beg you therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable or spiritual service. And verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, which is the world system, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now notice, there's two choices here. World conformity, conforming to the world, which like I said, all you got to do is just kind of quit. Just quit listening to the Word, quit going to church, quit fellowshipping with believers. And you just start drifting away, and you'll become conformed to the world system. You live in the world system, you'll become conformed to the world system. But, if you are transformed, that's the Greek word metamorpho, transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you'll prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. Well, we're out of time. We're going to have to stop here. But I tell you what, I trust that this has been a revelation to you of what we face. We face world conformity or we face being in the will of God depending on our choice. And I beg you, brethren, choose the right one choose to be not conformed to the world but transformed by renewing your mind to revelation knowledge of the Word of God. That's my desire for you. Praise the Lord. Now I'd love for you to write me here. You can write me at Word of Faith Ministries. Our address is Word of Faith Ministries P.O. Box 5213-5213 High Point, North Carolina. The zip code is 27262. I'd encourage you to write me there, or you can always write me at my email address. My email address is drbill, D-R-B-I-L-L, at W-O-F-M dot O-R-G. And, of course, our website, W-O-F-M dot O-R-G, check that out. There's teaching there. There's radio broadcasts there. There's uh, videos like this there. All of these resources are available. Articles for you to read. What exactly what we believe with all the scriptures of what we believe, full Bible study for that. Lots of good things that I'd encourage you to check out. Amen. Do that for me. Join me again next time on the next Word of Faith Netcast. And remember until then to fulfill the Word of God.
The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.